What is Gomboro disease? How is Gomboro disease transmitted? Is Gomboro disease preventable? How do you vaccinate your best against Gomboro disease? Well, today we are vaccinating our best against Gomboro disease. So, in this farm diary session, I'm going to be sharing with you everything you need to know about Gomboro disease and how to go about the vaccination. Probably you might learn one or two things you can apply in your farm and the video is starting right now. The Gomboro disease, also known as infectious bursa disease, is a disease that affects the chicken. It is caused by infectious bursa disease virus. It's a strong virus anyway. It can stay inactive within a farm premises for over four months. And the disease starts when someone, when you lose guard in your biosecurity or someone brings it into the farm and a chick is affected. Now, when a chick is affected, it can transmit it through fecal oral route, which means if the chick that is affected happens to defecate inside the feed or inside the water and other healthy ones consume it, they might get it depending on the level of their maternal immunity against Gumboro. The symptoms of Gumboro include, um, you see various common symptoms like loss of appetite, raw food feather, huddling one side, and then you see some respiratory signs like um, difficulty breathing, gasping, you also see some nervous signs like paralysis. I think when it gets to that stage, the best will pack up. And the mortality rate in Gomboro disease is 80%. But the good news is, any bed that survives after five days, Gomboro will never affect her bed again. But check now, we've already lost 80% of them. That's no longer business. So today we are going to be vaccinating. By the way, there's no treatment for Gomboro. You only manage what's left. You only give them symptomatic treatment and probably the 20% that survives, that's it. But the best way to handle Gomboro disease is just to prevent it by maintaining strict biosecurity in your farm. And then the sure way is to vaccinate the best against Gomboro disease. So when you give a Gomboro disease vaccine, the vaccine is best given within the period that the maternal immune system of the bird is still active. That's within the first week to the fourth week, from day seven to day 28 depending on your farm schedule. So today we are going to be giving the vaccine and to our own chicks. Actually our chicks are 10 days old today. You should have given it yesterday on the ninth day, but we had a little delay along the line because we treated a little issue. So here are the birds this morning. I just made them a little alert anyway. So how we give the Gomboro disease over here in our farm is first thing we do is just to discard the previous day's water because this vaccine is kind of too sensitive. The vaccine is too sensitive. It's, it is interaction sensitive in that there are some elements and uh, materials that and minerals that the vaccine should not react with. Like number one is choline. Choline is always present in water, depending on the level of choline anyway. It can deactivate the vaccine. That's why some people use milk to dilute their Gombro vaccine, because milk helps bind and inactivate the choline in the water. So the first thing we do over here is to discard the previous day's water. Let me open here a little so that there will be more light is coming in. To so make this video a bit clearer. And over here we have the multivitamin we gave the leftover of the multivitamin we gave yesterday. You know, multivitamin always comes a day before vaccination and a day after vaccination. So I'm going to be discarding the water. And also go inside to discard the ones inside from the chicks corner. Because of the interactive sensitive nature of the, the vaccine, after we are done discarding this water, the next thing we do is to wash the entire butters to make sure that there is no trace of any medication inside to avoid vaccine failure. 
So I'm going to be keeping the camera aside and doing some of those behind the scene activities. Now that I'm done washing the the butters, I'm going to be starving the best of water for the next two hours. The essence of this starvation is for them to be very, very tasty. Because also this vaccine is time sensitive. Once administered, I think it shouldn't stay more than 30 minutes. And also the dosage I'm going to be giving the best is just 500 doses because the best are 312 in number. So giving them 300 doses on that dose. So instead I'll be giving them the next dosage, which is 500 doses. And the vaccine is already in the farm, it's in the refrigerator to maintain what we call a cold chain to avoid vaccine failure. Now, I wash this one because here is where I'm going to be mixing the vaccine. And I'm going to be using a very small amount of water because I already know the quantity of water that can fill up the pipe within this nipple system here. And it's going to, the amount of water that is going to fill it up is just five liters. But instead of just mixing the vaccine inside 5 liters, I'll be adding extra 3 liters because by the next 2 hours, the best will be very, very tasty and it will be a first come first drink basis. When you administer the 5 liters in the vaccine, the ones that are stronger and faster might consume the entire water. So the extra 3 liters I'm putting is just to make space for the late drinkers to also participate in the vaccination. So for the next 2 hours, they're going to be staying off water. Two hours later. Let's just check on the base. As you can see, the base are just restless. They are tasty. See these guys. Trying to drink from where water is not coming out from. So it's time to mix the vaccine. So here is the the vaccine in question. I see place it on cold pure water although it's out from the refrigerator and also I've removed the metallic cup. So right now I'll be mixing the vaccine and here is how to mix it. You bring the vaccine and then you dip your hand inside the water. You open the vaccine inside the water and release it. Then you rock it a little for the contents to dissolve. After that, we leave the stir the water and just leave it to stay for like 10 minutes so that it will be to mix properly. Okay, now that I've finished mixing the basin, the next thing is to release it for them to drink. But first of all, since it's a nipple drinker and I open the outlet for water to flow out, first thing I do is to check all the outlets to be certain that like they are not here right now. So this outlet is locked. This one is locked so that water will not enter inside this pipe over here and waste. Meanwhile, inside I also confirm whether I've locked it's locked. This one over here is locked and this one is locked. That means the water will be confined within this space for the best. So now I'll be releasing it. And after releasing it, 
I go inside to assist the best, make sure that they know that the water is now available by just entering and tapping the nipples. Then the ones that are resting, probably because they've not seen water or they've eaten and they just want to rest. By the way, this is the 10th day and the temperature is still being optimized within 29 and 30 degrees centigrade. So the best are still, I think the water has started flowing in. Some of them have observed it, so what I'll do is to signal orders. And then the ones that are busy resting, I disturb them. This disturbance now will make them run and also notice that those that have been awake are now drinking and they have no other choice than to join them. So look around right now, the chicks are really thirsty, so they will certainly rush the water and before you know it, 8 liters is gone. Now these ones that are not yet participating in the vaccination I disturb them to make sure that they go towards the top. These are the late drinkers. That's why I had to add extra three liters to accommodate them. Now this is the first dose of the first dose of Gumboro. We still give them the second dose before the 28th day. Now some points to note about vaccination is number one, you don't vaccinate sick beds. If your beds are sick and you in fact you notice your beds have symptoms of sickness, the first thing to do is just to wait out. Ignore the vaccination for the meantime, treat your best. Then, when they are now healthy, you can vaccinate them. Secondly, are all the best going to participate in the vaccination? No, certainly not. Some of them might not drink water. Although all of them are thirsty, you might have one or two, or just a few percentage of them not drinking. But if you're able to vaccinate about 90% of them, then what we call herd immunity, when many people can prevent the disease. The disease might not get the chance to spread. So that's how it's done over here. How do you vaccinate your first dose of Gomboro? Please feel free to share with us in the comment section. If you have any question, you also feel free to ask in the comment section. Make sure you subscribe to this channel and then see you next time.